and a clash over the future of the US bond market. Iconic investor Warren Buffett and renowned hedge fund manager Bill Ackman have seemingly taken opposing positions. With Ackman aggressively shorting 30-year US treasuries, Buffett fearlessly investing 10 billion US dollars each month into US T-bills and the US rating agency Fitch downgrading the United States from AAA to AA+, citing the repeated down-to-the-wire debt ceiling negotiations that threaten the US government's ability to pay its bills, many investors were caught by surprise. So in this video, I will briefly discuss both Buffett's and Ackman's bets and whether one can really speak of a high stakes confrontation between the two legendary investors. All right, so I've come across a couple of headlines recently that suggest that the two investment titans, Warren Buffett and Bill Ackman, are taking opposing bets and have a fundamentally different outlook on the future of the US economy. Like for example, this Barron's article titled Warren Buffett and Bill Ackman face off over bonds, or this tweet here that reached almost half a million people. So what is all this fuss about? I would suggest we start with Bill Ackman. Ackman, the founder of Pershing Square Capital Management, recently shared on X, or Twitter, or however you want to call it, that he is, quote unquote, short in size, 30 year US treasuries. And he was sharing his thoughts on this particular trade in a very long tweet or post. And let me just highlight the most important points and his rationale behind shorting US long term treasury bonds before I then explain how shorting government bonds actually works. So here's what he wrote, quote unquote, I have been surprised how low US long term rates have remained in light of structural changes that are likely to lead to higher levels of long term inflation, including deglobalization, higher defense costs, the energy transition, growing entitlements and the greater bargaining power of workers. As a result, I would be very surprised if we don't find ourselves in a world with persistent 3% dish inflation. From a supply demand perspective, long term treasuries also look overbought with 32 trillion US dollars of debt and large deficits as far as the eye can see and higher refee rates and increasing supply of treasuries is assured. When you couple new issuance with quantitative tightening, it is hard to imagine how the market absorbs such a large increase in supply without materially higher rates. He also later added that he is making the investment via options and not via shorting bonds outright. Okay, feel free to pause the video right here to read the rest of the tweet, but apparently he's short long-term bonds, as I said, quote unquote, in size and 30 year US bonds specifically. And I think I need to briefly explain what all of this actually means. Let's take a look at an example. So right now the 30 year US treasury yields a return of 4.3%. I'm rounding up here. And if we now assume you buy $100,000 worth of 30 year US treasury bonds, the bond issuer, which is the US government, pays you $4,300 a year for 30 years. And that's the bond yield. And after 30 years, the US government then promises to pay you the $100,000 back, which is referred to as the bond's face value. Now, what you have to understand is that a bond's price and yield change on a daily basis. Of course, you can also just hold the bond until maturity, so you never sell it and simply collect the yearly bond coupon of 4.3%. But of course, you could also sell it on the open market because a bond is a publicly traded security, just like stocks, and thus can be sold before maturity without the bond issuer being involved. Now, what's important to understand is that bonds and interest rates have an inverse relationship. When interest rates go up, prices of existing bonds tend to fall, even though the coupon rate of these existing bonds actually remains constant. As a result, the bond yields go up. So that's essentially the bet that Ackman is making here. And if you think this through, this makes a lot of sense because the demand for the bond will shift as the interest rates available elsewhere increase or decrease. Just like a store cannot get its customers to pay, say, $3 for an apple, when the store across the street offers the very same apple for $1, bond buyers are also looking for their best alternatives. So if you can buy a 30 year treasury bond with a 5% yield elsewhere, why would you buy a bond that yields only 4.3%? So to sell our bond that yields only $4,300 a month, we have to sell it at a lower price than its face value. In fact, to offer buyers a 5% return, we would need to sell the bond for 86,000 US dollars because 5% of 86,000 would be 4,300. 
So essentially the bond is now trading below its $100,000 face value. Now bond pricing is a little more complicated than I make it seem here. You also have to factor in the face value, for example, that is received by the bond holder at maturity. So if we do the math correctly here, say you sell the 30 year bond after one year. So there are 29 years of payments left. Interest rates, however, have risen and buyers of your bond demand a 5% return. Well, then you can get $89,400. And feel free to correct me here. Personally, I'm not a bond investor. And in fact, I've never bought or sold a bond myself and I might very well have missed something here. Now to get back to Ekman, later in the tweet, he did some back of the envelope math, highlighting that he's expecting inflation rates to stay persistently around 3%. And he says 30 year treasury yields could then hit 5.5% soon. I think in this context, it's also worth reiterating that Ackman is a hedge fund manager and this bet mainly serves as a hedge for his stock portfolio. Because if long-term interest rates rise, Ackman thinks that the value of stocks as a group will go down. So now let's focus on Buffett. Does Buffett actually disagree with Bill Ackman here? As suggested by some of the market commentators that I've shown you at the beginning of the video. Well, in my opinion, the answer is a clear no. Let me explain. In response to the Fitch credit rating downgrade, Buffett made a public comment stating that Berkshire Hathaway is still buying around 10 billion US dollars worth of US T bills every week and that, quote unquote, there are some things people shouldn't worry about. This, meaning the rating downgrade, is one. The edit, quote unquote, the only question for next Monday is whether we will buy 10 billion US dollars of three month or six month US T bills. Now the last part is actually the most important one when we discuss whether Ackman and Warren Buffett are taking opposing bets. Ackman, just as a reminder, is short 30 year US treasuries and Buffett on the other hand is buying three and six month US T bills. So we're looking at completely different bond durations and times to maturity. And I would argue that clearly these two bets aren't correlated at all. Buffett is mainly managing the massive cash pile that Berkshire Hathaway is sitting on. As of Berkshire's most recent quarterly report, Buffett needs to manage a cash pile worth almost 150 billion US dollars. And of course he wants to earn some return on that money while waiting for more attractive opportunities. And short-term US bonds are of course the ideal instrument to accomplish just that. Put differently, by buying short-term US bonds, which Buffett will hold until maturity, he doesn't express any opinion on the outlook of long-term US bonds. So in order for one bet to work, either Buffett's or Ackman's, the other one doesn't have to fail. And interestingly, even Ackman himself expressed this idea on Twitter when he responded to another tweet and wrote, quote unquote, we actually agree. Buffett would never buy 30 year treasuries at anywhere near current yields. His purchases are just cash management using short-term T-bills. We also invest our cash in short-term treasuries. Okay, that's it for this video. Any support is of course appreciated. Liking the video, leaving a comment or watching one of my other videos next. Take care.